Okay, today we're gonna to make my version of a Cuban sandwich, but we're gonna start this all out in our Instant Pot. So right now I've got three tablespoons of avocado oil just heating up, I gotta to set to saute. While that's heating, I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt. This is a lot of pork. So what I do, if you've watched me before, you know I'm a little bit frugal. I like to buy things on sale. I bought a nine pound bone-in pork shoulder. It was 97 cents a pound. It's just really the way to shop. I cut it all up. I actually saved some of it for the freezer. I'm gonna make a big ragu, a big sauce with it, with the rest of it. So I just kind of, when I come home from the store, I get things prepped and that's how I, I find I save a lot of money that way. So just shop your sales. This is my own secret rub, wink, wink. I think I'll have it for you in the description below. But I'm just gonna pour a little bit on each, get it all nice and seasoned. So obviously this isn't traditional, right? A traditional Cuban. That's the fun thing about cooking. I love it because I can kind of, you know, make things my own. What I wanna do is I wanna get all sides seasoned with this lovely rub. It has a lot of things in it, or I would tell you. I will put it in the description for you. I always have it on hand. It's great on chicken, uh, pork. You could even put this on fish. It would be fabulous. And it's nice to have you own, because again, you know what's in it. You know how long it's been on your shelf. And you can even do this, season this up the night before. Okay, now I'm just gonna get in there with my hands. This is just the way to do it. So I'm just gonna kind of pat it in there. All right, I'm gonna kind of get it on the sides. All this is left over there. Don't want to waste any of that good stuff. So it's kind of like Texas barbecue is met Cuban sandwich. You'll see. All right, while I'm waiting for this to get hot, you'll see it in a minute. I'm going to just rinse my hands off. Okay, so the, the Instant Pot's hot, oil's hot. I'm going to do two pieces at a time. Just gonna, what I want to do is get a nice sear on them here. I'm gonna go in, and this will take several minutes. I'm gonna do it in two batches. I'll uh, show you how to finish it off. But the great thing about the Instant Pot, you can do this in about Probably from start to finish. By the time it takes for it to heat up for me to do this process here, probably about two hours. It'd be about eight to 10 hours in a slow cooker, which I find too. You could put it on, put it like cook overnight and you wake up the hours smelling great. So either way, and I will leave directions for both in the description. Okay, so I've got my last two pieces in here, just browned up a little bit. And now look at, I want you to see the bottom of this. So don't let this scare you. There's a lot of brown bits in the bottom here. I'm adding in some chicken stock and I'm gonna make sure we deglaze this. Okay, so a lot of times I hear um, from friends and people that will write in and they'll say they get like a burn notice on their Instant Pot. That's because they didn't scrape up the bottom of the, of the pot. That was just all the spices from the pork. So I wanna make sure that those are all gone before I put this all back in and we seal up the pot. So I'm gonna shut this off, shut the saute off. I'm gonna put the pork in. It already smells good. I know this is something about making this yourself, right? And the great thing is obviously this is gonna make a lot of whole pork. So I can put this in the freezer. We can have it another time, but we can make it somehow different, right? We could make nachos, right? Things like that. We could put it in a soup. I mean, it's just kind of use your imagination. All right, I'm gonna add, to give it that kind of little Cuban kind of flair, I'm gonna add in a little bit of orange and a little bit of lime. So this is one of my, I love these little tools. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. Okay, lime is going in. I love the smell of citrus. All right. Okay, all I gotta do now is two bay leaves going in and we're gonna seal her up. We're gonna hit the pressure cook and we want it to go for one hour. Good, I have it set for one hour, it's on more high. And then when it goes off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it naturally release, which just means leave it alone for 20 minutes. Then I'm gonna hit the button, to, just to release whatever pressure is left in, in, the, in the pot. All right, see you in about an hour and 20 minutes. Okay, so this has been pressure cooking for one hour. I let it naturally release, which means I just let it sit there. 
uh, for 20 minutes. Now I'm just gonna press the release button on top, let all that pressure go out, the rest of it, and then my pin will drop, and that's when it's safe to remove this top. Okay, time to unveil. It smells really good in this kitchen. Oh my gosh, that looks amazing. Okay, so remember, I had my own rub that we put on there. Put a little bit of chicken stock in there, a little bit of orange juice, a little bit of lime juice. So good. And this is like, literally, you can tell, so tender. Okay. And so one thing I didn't tell you in the beginning too is I did trim a lot of the fat off of this. We do not want, you know, a lot of fat um, when we shred this. It's gonna go on uh, onto our sandwich. Even though it does cook down, but there's still a lot of fat in the shoulder meat. It's just something I do when you go to the store, come home before you put everything in your freezer, just kind of trim it up, package it up. It's the best time to do it. Okay, so I'm just gonna use two forks and just gonna come in here. Oh my gosh, you can just see that. Look at that. Yeah, you're gonna wanna make this. And you saw how easy it is, right? I mean, it just it's just getting everything in there. Like I said, it takes about two hours total because we've got time that we did a little searing of the pork and then we cook it for the one hour and then we're gonna let it rest for the 20 minutes. All right, I'm gonna keep doing this and then we're gonna have Cuban sandwiches in just a few minutes. Okay, so pulled pork is done. Now we're just gonna make our paninis. So I look at this and to me that's four sandwiches. So I'm just gonna cut it in half like that. And I'm just gonna do two at a time. So, and then that will cut into half again. So I've got my panini machine all heated up, ready to roll. Got a little olive oil on there. And what I like to do with these, I like to scoop out some of this, some of the bread. Um, actually, I can save this. I can use it for breadcrumbs. So I'm just gonna put them in my back here. I can throw them in the freezer when I have enough. I'll just toast them off, okay? Because the reason I do this is it gives me more room to put stuff, right? A little bit more cheese, a little bit more pickles, whatever, whatever you like on there. I'm gonna do the same with the other side and then we'll get our panini assembled. Okay, so I told you, this is like a Cuban-like sandwich, right? I like to put my own twist on things. Cuban sandwich does not normally have mayo on it. I'm adding some, I just like it. I like the combo of, of mayo and mustard actually together. So I'm gonna put mayo on one side and I'm gonna put mustard on the other. They're just, they're just a good match in my palate anyways. I hope you enjoy it. But if not, leave it off and you can go a little bit more traditional with just like the yellow mustard. So yellow mustard going in on this side. Who doesn't like a good crunchy sandwich, right? So good. Okay. And I'm gonna add a little bit more. Just gonna make sure we get a little bit of mustard in every bite. Okay, the other thing I like to do is I like to have cheese on both sides because cheese is kind of like a glue. So I'm just gonna kind of tuck it in there. Tuck it in there. Do the same, see the reason why we hollowed it out, right? Okay. Tuck it in there. Now I'm gonna layer some pickles. I love pickles. So sandwich with them. Cuban sandwich definitely does have pickles on it. That is a traditional thing. Okay, so I'm gonna put a slice, maybe two of the ham. Okay, so now I'm gonna add on that delicious pulled pork that we made earlier in our Instant Pot. So good. The citrus, our homemade rub on there. So yummy. And I just, once I shredded it, I just add a little bit of juice from the pan just to kind of keep it nice and moist, just like that. Gonna put the cover on, just like that. Okay, moment of truth. We're gonna put it on. I always kind of fight with this a little bit. I kind of have to hold it in so it doesn't come out, but I love a good crunchy sandwich. I'm just gonna kind of hold it in place. There we go. And I'm just gonna get this nice and pressed and nice and crunchy, and we're gonna have dinner. Okay, so nice and brown and crunchy on top. Just gonna get this off onto a plate and get our second sandwich made. So we'll have dinner tonight and then lunch for tomorrow. Okay, so what do you think? Looks Let's amazing, try it. right? You wanna split that with me? Sure. Okay, so I'm gonna cut it in half and then cut it in half again. 
I love hearing that crunch. All right, let's see. Try this one in the middle. All right. Mmm. Mmm, look at that. Right? Got the cheese, got the pulled pork, the ham. Mmm. 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 I love the toasty bread. Oh, yeah. Right? Mmm. Do you like the mayo? Is that a winner? Yeah, I like the mayo. Okay. So not traditional, but I think it goes really good. Maybe give it a try. See what you think. Let me know. Comment on it. Would love to hear your thoughts. If you haven't subscribed to us, please do. We thank you for those who are already doing that. And don't forget to click that bell so you know when our next video is coming out. Hope you enjoy these recipes.